in this problem, we're being asked to find the exact value of cosine inverse of negative one-half. The first thing I like to do in these problems uh, is to get rid of this inverse notation. So if your inverse function takes negative one-half and sends it to y, that means the cosine function undoes that. So it takes y and sends it back to negative one-half. So you can always just rewrite it this way. The next step uh, that I like to do is specify where y is. This is really, really important. So y is equal to this inverse cosine. That means that y is in the range of the inverse cosine. So y is in, and the interval for the range of inverse cosine is zero pi. This is super important. So like it's all about knowing the range. So now we have to use uh, basic trig knowledge to figure out what this is. So when I think of one half, I know from memory that the cosine of pi over three is equal to one half. So now I know that I have to find an angle on the unit circle that has a reference angle of pi over three. So we know we're trapped here between zero and pi. So cosine is negative. It's the x coordinate on the unit circle. Therefore, it must be over here. It's a lot of knowledge in this problem. It's a simple looking problem, but it requires like a lot of, you have to know a lot of trig to do this. And then so you say, okay, this angle here is pi over three. That's our reference angle, right? Because that's what we want as a reference angle. And then that means this angle here must be two pi over three. Because if you do pi minus pi over three, you get two pi over three. So the answer is two pi over three. And notice it's in here. Let me just do a really quick recap of everything we just did because it was a lot. People have a really hard time with these problems. So y is equal to the cosine inverse of negative one half. So the first step is to rewrite it using just the regular cosine. How? The cosine inverse takes negative one half and sends it to y. That means the cosine function takes y and sends it back to negative one half. Then you specify the range of inverse cosine purely from memory, just totally worth memorizing. Then you say, okay, What's the y that's gonna work here? So now you gotta think back to like trig. All right, so what angle gives me one half? Well, pi over three, that's from memory. So you know that the trig function values of an angle are the same as the reference angle, except possibly for a sine difference. So you know that um, the other angle you need has to be one um, related to pi over three. It has to have the reference angle of pi over three. So it has to be in quadrant two, because cosine is the x coordinate on the unit circle. And this is where it's negative, right? X is negative here. It can't be down here, right? Because this restricts us. So it's not gonna be down here. So you say, okay, what's the angle that lives in quadrant two that has a reference angle of pi over three? Two pi over three. And if you're not sure how to get that, think of pi as three pi over three. So three pi over three minus pi over three is two pi over three. Boom, there it is. I hope this video has been helpful.